everybody, and welcome to Be in the Know, Table Games and More. I'm the Bean Man, as you know, to be part of that. And tonight, it's my very exciting, very excited to have two of the monsters of the Midway. What do you call that? You know, uh, East meets West, uh, what, you know, whatever you want to call this. But two of the biggest operators in North America, Mr. Paul Malo on the West Coast, Mr. Ron G on the East Coast. Welcome to Be in the Know. Thank you. <laughs> it's appreciate it, man. So, so these guys, you know, like Paul, he runs Prechanga, and, and Ron, he's got he's got his finger on the trigger of MGM National ha Harbor, which is just a beast. I mean, both both these places are, I mean, it's just incredible that anybody could one guy could be so on top of it with, with these operations. I'm sure you got some great teams, but you know. It, it always comes down to the big man, doesn't it? I mean, that's that's where the pressure bit gets put. So uh, let's talk about uh, a few things, and and we'll start off with you, Ron G. You know, how's business out there on the East Coast? Oh, it's incredible, man. I tell you, um, you wouldn't think that there was a, a pandemic uh, without... Um, we are in our county, Prince George's County, not, entire, not the entire state, but our particular county still requires folks to wear masks indoors. So um, yeah. initially, back when the pandemic first started, we saw a lot of pushback. But now that we've been, you know, we've been doing this for a while, you know, it's kind of the norm. Um, we're not getting as much pushback, but um, our business is, is uh, fully recovered uh, from 2019 to now uh, and even exceeding all of our um, ex expectations. Now, do you have any uh, competitors like in other counties or something that do not have to wear masks? That is true. We do. We have uh, a few different uh, uh, competitors uh, that are in close proximity within 45 minutes of, of our casino. And they, their counties do not require them to wear masks. So it's sort of a, it, you would think it was a disadvantage. However, we're still, we're still you know, holding our own very well in the market. Yeah, and, and so the same goes here. Philadelphia County, we have to wear masks. Uh, the Philadelphia Live has to wear masks, but Parks, the big daddy up north, they, they don't have to wear masks. So uh, I really don't see where it makes a difference. Uh, uh, smoking, non-smoking, may, maybe having a little bit of toll on the slot play, I would guess, but I, 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 you know, I don't really see a whole lot of difference in table games play. Now, what, what kind of changes, have, have you made any kind of changes during this, you know, last 18, 19, man, is this thing ever going on? Anyway, months, have you had to make changes to deal with the, you know, the pandemic and, and just staffing and, and games and what, what, what was your strategy? Well, um, initially, um, we tried to get ahead of it because when everybody closed down, um, I think I was one of like, you know, well, Hopefully, our executive team stayed, and we tried to figure out, you know, what direction we're going to go and and how we sort of uh, move forward. This no everybody being not, you know, not really knowing what's going on or when this is going to end or you know how this is going to play out. So of course we went flexi like everyone else did uh, throughout tables and slots, um, and we realized that um, folks still wanted to come in and gamble, and they didn't mind being you know separated like that. Uh, we have now since changed that thought process at our property, uh, and we have taken the plexi down. We have left one option, one game per pick, per game type, so that people who still feel uncomfortable, they can play on that one game that's available for them. Um, but throughout the slots, we all, we've realized that, you know, folks kind of, it kind of creates an end cap, you know, and, and, and we know you get most of your play on an, on an end cap game on, in the slots or on the game that's on the very end. So we just kept all the plexi up in slots and the folks, they, they love it. They, they, they've adjusted to it and sort of created their own space to play. So that's, that's what we've done. Well, well a slot player is kind of a solid, solitary type of person anyway. You know, that right. it's always been, you know, they're not the community uh, type yes. of player. That, that the table games player is, you know, they want to be, we want to be close. They want to chat. Slot player just wants to hit that button. I mean, that's that it. a bit. Paul, Paul, what, what, you know, how's business out there on the West coast? Strong as it ever was? Yeah, strong. I, I think we're seeing that throughout the nation too. Um, it's, it's whether it's just pent up demand or, or it's uh, people spending those checks that they're getting <laughs> from the government. 
Uh, I don't know which one it is or both, uh, but yeah, it, it's been, it's been crazy busy. Um, and, and I, I can check all the boxes that Ron just talked about with, you know, we, we did a lot of the same things with the plexiglass and, um, and uh, it, there's still a, a mandate to wear masks, um, but it's kind of calming down now and we're not enforcing it as much. Um, all of our, all of our employees, they wear masks. So, um, man, I look for the, the day when we could just burn those things, you know, and get rid of them. And, uh, uh, but I would add, I did keep up the plexi at tables. I didn't do the dividers in between the players. I took them down. So I kind of did a hybrid on tables where we left that shield up for the dealer, but we kept the, we took the dividers down and in our slot areas, we took a lot of the uh, dividers down. So there's, there's still some, but not, not much. But, but again, uh, very similar to uh, what Ron's experienced. Do, do you have smoking? Uh, no, actually, we do not. And and uh, our our pure property, which is I would say Sam Manuel, which just recently changed their name to Yamava. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, they're also non-smoking, and uh, there are some smoking casinos in, in California. Uh, actually, a lot more than. Uh, there is non-smoking, but yeah, I think it, it, what a, no pun intended, what a breath of fresh air to have a, a non-smoking casino. It's amazing. It, now, were it, you not, were you non-smoking before the pandemic? No, it was smoking, full on smoking. And I, I'll tell you what, it's, it's really refreshing and it, you know, it's California, maybe it's, uh, you know, it's acceptable, but you know, really people just don't like smoking indoors anymore. You know, it, it's just, you're seeing it more and more. And, and it used to be in the past was, oh, it's going to kill a casino if you go non-smoking. But I, I don't know. I think it's going the other way where it's going to be the, the norm. Ron, did you have smoking prior to the uh, uh, pandemic? We, uh, we did not. So our whole state is non-smoking. So um, none of the casinos here, we, we actually have carved out a um, non, I mean, a um, smoking area that's sort of like a smoking patio that we've created. And we actually created that since the pandemic. And so people go outside and they'll be able to you know, play, play some slot machines while they're at the outside uh, enjoying a cigarette for those who like. Yeah, now I was from, you know, before I moved to Philadelphia, I was in Ohio and we had an outdoor smoking uh, slot area, did very successful. You know, it was like three times uh, a no a normal uh, production on them slot machines. And, uh, but we didn't have smoking inside. There's no smoking in Ohio. And I, I seen, I read an article on the CDC, I think it was yesterday that Lank City, uh, the senators who are up for election, both of them are opposed to uh, uh, smoking. And it looks like they're really going to push to go Lang City to go non-smoking okay. inside the casino, not on the boardwalk or, uh, you know, out on the beach, but you, you, you won't, you know, that's the next thing. And I, 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 I really, you know, we're, we're right now we're non-smoking. We went back to smoking and Philadelphia put a mask mandate back. We went, went, went back to non-smoking. Uh, I, I really, you know, at parks never did go back to smoking and, uh, you know, who knows, who knows, you know, it might be the whole East coast, uh, will be, uh, uh, non-smoking. Uh, and, and, you know, what here, realistically there's 13 to 14 percent of the u.s population that smokes anymore that's way down from when i was a kid you know the marlboro man and all that it's 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 14 percent. you know now there's a couple of jurisdictions like if you go to like chicago and in near ohio it's 21 to 19 percent but overall it, it's way down so i i think you know as we talk about things and what the future looks like in in, in indoor casinos i i think smoking ultimately will be out. I remember when I was a kid and I was working in Vegas, I was, I was working at the uh, Silver City and it was the only, only smokeless casino. And then sooner or later, after I left it, it went back, then it went back smokeless and then of course it closed. But uh, yeah, it was, it, it was interesting. So uh, <clears throat> what about labor guys? What about labor? Are, are we experiencing labor problems uh, on the East Coast, uh, Ron? Um, yes, uh, I think it's uh, typical throughout the uh, the business. Uh, some folks just don't want to come back. Uh, they're you know they're apprehensive about you know the safety protocols in place and so forth and so on. And we've definitely had some um, you know our challenges. Uh, some of the things that we well one of the main things that we've done that we hadn't done in the past is we've uh, we we stood up we stood up our own gaming school. And typically, a lot of folks do that around the country. It's normal. 
but we're actually paying the students to come to class. So we're, it's sort of a, um, a, a pay to learn type uh, or get paid to learn type environment. Uh, we're paying them um, the 1150, which is a minimum wage. So they'll go through training for 12 weeks. And then after they come to the training, they will have all, already completed their 90 day probationary period. And they come right in as a, as a dealer. So um, that's something we're doing. Um, we, our last class or our class that we have currently going is um, we have 100, about 180 students in the class. So that's gonna help us. So we're just gonna keep, keep rolling with that thought process and that because we see, we see some success with uh, getting folks to actually come in and, and get paid to learn. Paul, now you got go for your own out there. Are you having trouble with the go for your own getting uh, people to deal cards? Yes, believe it or not. And I mean, our, our, our dealers do great. I mean, it's, I would say, among the top three in California of, of what they make uh, because it's, you know, go for your own. And they, uh, what, a, what an amazing thing, Ron, by the way. Um, anyway, um, yeah, we're, we're struggling with getting people. I mean, it's, I've had two career fairs and tomorrow actually I have my third career fair uh, for dealers, floor, uh, dual rates. Um, I, I mean, pit managers, I'm not sure. Strip managers, I'm not sure. That's, that's no problem. It's easy to promote with it. And, but yeah, um, we're, we're, we're hurting, you know, we got a lot of people out on medical, which probably won't come back. And, uh, yeah, very similar to, to what Ron is experiencing, you know? So a lot of uh, properties, uh, including Cincinnati, before I moved uh, to Philadelphia, we had just went to paid training. Uh, Philadelphia, we just our, we just had our first class of paid training, and it seems to boost the, the numbers. So, I mean, definitely when you put somebody in there and you say you're going to have to go for five, six weeks or four weeks, whatever your program is, and you're, you're not going to make nothing, it's a, it's a hard sell. And yeah. we've, we've already proven that, you know, throwing these uh, 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 hiring bonuses and stuff, that doesn't work. I mean, in, in, in Cincinnati, I, I offered 4,000 in the first year uh, possible bonuses and it, it, didn't, it didn't increase the numbers at all. So that, that strategy doesn't, doesn't quite get it. So the, the paid training de definitely helps. I, I mean, here, here's the problem we're all into and it doesn't matter where it's casinos or any industry. When you sit somebody on the sidelines for three months without working, you've changed a habit, you know? And when you change a habit, it's hard to start the habit back up again. It's just like, you know, quitting drinking or whatever. You know, you got more chance. If you get past that first month of, of always staying sober or whatever, well, you stay out of the workforce for, for 90 days, boy, it, we have seen you know, whatever we do, the next pandemic, hopefully I'm not here or, you know, I probably won't be alive. But if there was, you got to find some way to keep these people uh, in the game. I, I don't know what it is, but man, oh man, once you put them on the sidelines, it's a whole different ballgame. So let's move on to something more exciting. Let's talk about G2E. We all went out there and, you know, to me, it was a, it was a different experience. Uh, but I want to hear from you guys because, uh, you know, Paul was doing his thing and I seen Ron jetting around and I, I caught a glimpse of him a couple times, a couple of events, but, but, you know, Ron, what, what was your experience at the show? Did it have the same feel? It didn't. Um, it, it, I felt like they did a good job with the safety aspects of it, but I felt like the um, turnout and the, the, the traditional product that you see was not there. Um, I felt like there were, I felt like it was three quarters of, of GT versus the whole thing that you're used to, you know. Um, I think they did the best that they could with, with the uncertainty of the times. So I will give credit there, at definitely. And, and you, know, that's, you know, that's what I saw. So a lot of the product that I saw, um, I mean, I figured two years in development, I was, I was maybe looking for a little bit more, you know, um, but, you know, I get it. Two years, you don't have, you only have one third, not even one third, probably a quarter of your team available, you know, and I know you have all these different vendors with their R&D teams working. A lot of that stuff is done behind the scenes, but a lot of this stuff, a lot of it needs to be a collaborative effort to, you know, to build something new and something great. So, you know, I, I think they did the best that they could. Uh, but um, it just, maybe I felt like three quarters. I don't know, maybe it's just me. 
Yeah, it was it was a different different feel. Hey, I got to give credit to Tangam. I know when when they were out, instead of shutting every all their developers down, they took a shot at uh, developing. Uh, you know, uh, optimization software for uh, slot machines. Lots. They're they're basically yeah. a uh, a table games optimization. Now they're they're into the slot business, and uh, you know, kudos to them for you know taking that time and saying, hey, you know, let's not shut this thing down. Let's let's bring these guys in and put them put them to work and make them uh, develop a product. And what I'm hearing uh, from the around, it, it's not that it's not bad. So that's, that's a great call out, baby. That's a great call out because they 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 nailed it with uh, the tables. Uh, I know those guys. Uh, a lot of them I like to call good friends of mine. They are. And uh, I'll tell you, they nailed it with that product. And then they went and, and turned it into a uh, slot, slot deal too, slot opt optimization product. And, uh, you know, uh, kudos to them. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, Paul, how did it feel to you? What did you, you think of this? Well, I, I would say it's a, it's a 50,000 foot view. I mean, there was a lot of empty spaces. Uh, There's a lot of vendors that just didn't show up. Um, and and uh, very similar to what Ron said, I mean, it felt like about a three quarters of a, of a G2E. But again, hey, this is the, the first year after the, the shutdown, right? So they, I think they did an amazing job. And, and, and I think they kept uh, people as safe as they could, you know, and, and, um, and you kind of got that this year. So uh, again, I, I echo what Ron says is it, they did an amazing job at the, the Sands Expo Center there. And, um, but and as I drilled down, I went, I, I I checked into my main vendors. Um, I, I looked around for some new product. I, I, you know, I was interested. I think the, the big topics this year were, were sports betting and, you know, AI and, and um, probably optical recognition. And I really wasn't impressed much with either of those three areas from what I saw. But, but I did see some cool things. I mean, some of them were in the slot world. I don't know if you saw that, the Dune tunnel. Yeah. That was I, I, cool. I think it was aristocrat. They did an amazing job. And, and, um, uh, you know, and outside of G2E, just, I mean, when I was walking through Palazzo, I love that uh, the, the interblock, the, the stadium gaming they did. Yeah. They did an amazing job there. And and people always say to me, oh, are you threatened by ETGs? And I'm really not. I think we're, we're uh, you know, we're, we're training uh, table games players as, as on slot machines. And hopefully when they, you know, graduate from that, they can switch on over. You know, um, I did see some, I think I, I whizzed through IGT booth and I saw some um, uh, one of the machines had the live sports feed on it and it, it had the ability to make wagers on that machine and it was a uh, one of their like multi-game machines mixed in so I thought that would be a great kind of bar top machine you know that, that you could play you could make wagers and watch the game and I mean I, I think that technology is a, a really I think that's a it probably technology has been here all this time it's just an interesting way to you know place it so um, other than that, I mean, I guess a lot of the international vendors didn't show up to G2E. And so we didn't see a lot of that. But um, and, and I'll tell you what, I missed the carpet, man. That that concrete was a little tough to walk on. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I, the, the, you're right about the international vendors really made it look empty compared to what it would have been. I, I, I think everybody that I wanted to see was still there, maybe not mm -hmm. quite the presence they had. I know a couple of companies like Galax and that they did a lot of events off site, and, 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 which was very good. But you know, Paul, I, I, I there, there was some very impressive interblock uh, product. There was some very, you know, what uh, SG's uh, Stadium Gaming had come a long, long way. Oh yeah, the real, really nice uh, uh, tournament uh, product on on their on their setup. Plus, they they have a you know SG. Of course, they have this monster catalog. But the ETGs are looking good. I think you're 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 hitting it that there's going to be some integration here, and I think they're a little slow on the trigger with that of a guy sitting there playing his ETG and being able to switch right over and make a sports bet or whatever. All that that's 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 going to come. But you know, I seen a I seen everybody taking a shot at cashless in one form or another. Yep. Uh, yeah. I don't yep. know. I don't know where it's going to go. I, I know SG's made a big investment. Uh, I think they bought uh, right right during the show. It, there was a lot of uh, uh, pay as you go or pay and go or whatever that company is. They bought them and they, they're they're re uh, rebranding that product and bringing it out on the market. I I think it it's going to be good. Uh, but uh, 
Yeah, it's uh, it was a different different feel. So what about Ron? What about the feel in Las Vegas? What what you know? Let's let's go past the show and you're walking outside. What what did Vegas feel like? Any different? Same old Vegas or what? Um, it, it, it's different. There is a difference. It's just, I could not put my finger on it. You you don't get that same you know that same feeling that that oh it's exciting you know um. I don't know whether it was just because of the volume of people or the lack thereof or what, but I mean, I, I stayed um, at the Mirage and, um, you know, they do that big fire show right there in front of the Mirage. And, you know, I was looking for that, that crowd that I'm used to seeing. And it, it was a very small crowd. I mean, just from people walking down the street when I went down the strip is when you see it. But, you know, I, I, I think that um, Allegiance Field, is is a is a very positive thing for for Las Vegas. I mean, the Raiders and then the and then the concerts that they're able to do there and, and the type of, of, of entertainment offering that they're doing is very unique to Vegas. So um, that's 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 going to be huge. Uh, I was fortunate we were when we were there. They had a game, and the Raiders won that game. So it was huge. Once once that game let out, I saw the old Vegas feel come back. You know, so. Um, uh, I think that there's a lot of upside to to the Vegas market. Paul, what was your feeling when you was in there? I know you go there every other weekend, but you know what was what's, what's, what's I'm not proud of that, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta, gotta have it. Come out of the closet. There you go. It's a it's a four hour drive, you know, or a one hour flight. <laughs> um, it it uh, similar to what Ron said. I mean, you, you can. It, you really, it's not really a tangible thing. It's, it, you, but you can feel that COVID has definitely put a wet blanket over this thing and, and uh, really hasn't fully recovered, you know, from COVID. It's been, and, you know, granted, so we, we all haven't recovered from it yet. But, but um, yeah, it, 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 I did, hmm, yeah, it, it was amazingly busy at Venetian and Palazzo. I mean, I, I, albeit it's the G2E is right there, and I stayed at a Venetian and, you know, you got on one hand, you got people wearing masks and, and trying to social distance. On the other, you got huge crowds of people, you know, I mean, just walking through the place. So I think it's a good thing, really. I mean, I think we're we're all as humans, we're just getting sick of this and we want to get past it. And, you know, and, and we're we get the whole thing. And, and if you want to be safe, wear your mask. If you don't, don't, you know. But anyway, um, it, it didn't feel like the old Vegas, but it it feels like it's coming back to answer the question. Yeah, it definitely had an air of uh, busyness uh, that it didn't have when I was out there for NIGA. But, yeah. uh, uh, you know, the only, thing, the only thing I noticed was, you know, being, a, being 23 years uh, living there in Vegas, it, it, the feel of the, uh, you know, the, the customer service was just not quite, it wasn't bad. I can't say I had a, a bad experience at all, but mm -hmm. that, that, you know, at your beck and call, and 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 making sure proactive, I guess proactive service that they were always known for because they know their, their money's based on tips, right? Right. And, and that right. pro that proactive, really energetic type service, everybody was just kind of dull. Uh, did you get? Yeah. Did you feel yeah. that? Well? Yeah, you're you're right. You're right, Benny. You know, I was talking about that with a colleague and and. You know, when we talk to our team members, uh, who, who, by the way, do a great job, but you know, when we, when we sort of set the example and draw the bar for customer service, we talk about the service levels in Vegas and how everyone is 100% is, is on top of it. You know, I, I did not get that feeling this time. Now, probably because of previous experiences, you know, and you're like, wow, they just went over here. Can you believe what they just did? That type of thing. You didn't get that this time. You sort of got, okay. So that was cool. It was okay. It wasn't great. You know what I mean? But it was okay. So right. yeah, I agree with you. It was def definitely reactive versus yeah. proactive. And yeah. that's one thing Vegas was known for was uh, uh, proactive for service. So let's, uh, let's, let's close this thing up with a question that, you know, both of you guys are like at the top of the game. I mean, and maybe it's because you're old, but, but, but besides that, you know, I mean, and when people talk about big boys and operators, they talk about Pajanga, they talk about National Harbor, and I mean, you guys are leading them operations. 
So, you know, I, I know you guys are going to be modest. No, nah, I don't do this. And, but, you know, Paul, Paul, what, what, what makes Paul Malo so good? What do you do? Um, I'll tell you, man, I surround myself with good people. I mean, I've always tried to get people that are smarter than me on my team. You know, I'm not threatened by that. And I, and I, you know, I welcome it. And I, I love that collaboration of a team and I really believe in it. I believe in that, you know, you got to trust respect in, in, in with each other and, and have a tight cohesive team that, that communicates well. And, and I think that's the key it's, it's, and I'll tell you, as I've gone through this business is um, the toughest thing to find is really that, that high quality person at the higher levels and then when you get to that person, you know, can they, do they communicate well or effectively? And, and, and do they have that same kind of, you know, team methodology? And, but that's kind of what makes me tick. I'll tell you what, I, I, I'm just like a normal schmo. I want to go to work. I want to enjoy my job and I want to be around people that, you know, I can, I can work well with and, and I trust and, and we communicate well. And, and I'll tell you, I had it killer team in Sacramento. I mean, I probably had the best in the nation and I would put them up against anyone. And when we were together, man, we could do, we could climb mountains. I mean, it was just amazing. But again, I think that's, uh, that's kind of what makes me tick is, is, uh, it's putting together a killer team. We can do anything you want. It, it's awesome when it all gels. It really is. Uh, Ron, mm -hmm. what, 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 what makes Ron G go? Well, if I could, if I could echo, Everything that Paul just said, I'll tell you, my team, and I say my team, but I'm part of their team. You know what I mean? They are unbelievable. I don't, I mean, they, I don't have to ask, how is this going to happen? Or how is that going to happen? They're already taken care of it, so I don't even think about it. I know that they are going to take care of it and get it done. They, they, they have no, um, they have no limit to what they are willing to give. They're all selfless. They work for each other and with each other. And, and with all the, and they collaborate great with all the other uh, departments. So, um, and that's from my, uh, my table techs, EBS team, you know, all the, of course, the, the layers and tables and dealers, the floor, the, the, you know, the, the pits, the shifts. I mean, they're just amazing. Uh, they just, so the, so the shifts just, um, I just I just took the, the shifts and the, and the table techs uh, to dinner the other day just as a thank you, right? Table techs came in and they will give they 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 will fix it. This is so amazing. Like I'm going into this, I know, but it's just amazing because I want to give an example of, of how great they are. If if we needed covers to, to cover our um, um, we just got bonus spin extreme on our floor, so we needed covers to cover the um, two by two pad. My guys found plexi, they found clear hinges, they found clear screws, and they manufactured these covers for every single table. And I just said, wow, wouldn't it be great if we could cover that? <laughs> Boom. And they just went with it. <laughs> you know, they are amazing. So it's all about the team for me, it's just like Paul said, just to echo what he said, you surround yourself with great people, uh, you, you enable them, and then you let them go, you know, and then hopefully you can keep up with them and help them out along the way. <laughs> that's the way it is. So, well, you know, uh, that's why I do this for. You know, uh, Paul said, you know, you can get people smarter than you and, uh, you know, then get out of their way, right? Let them yeah. do what they yeah. do best. Yeah. And uh, as long as you give that initial guidance, you know, and I've went in and I've had teams that are weak. But you know what? Uh, you give them that initial guidance and, and, and set the expectations. You know what? The good ones fall and the other ones fall, fall, fall off. You right? So, <laughs> and, and when you keep the good ones, you keep them around you, you keep them close and, and you share as much as you can. You pay it forward as much as you can. And hopefully they tell you one day. I always remember the scene from Goodwill Hunting where, where Ben Affleck pulls up and he says to Matt Damon, he says, if I pull up to this porch in 20 years and you're still sitting there i'm gonna kill you because you know what when you train a guy so well that he he should be taken off you know you never feel bad about you know him leaving you or leaving the nest yeah. or whatever you can feel proud i mean you're proud. Right. you know I, i've i put several vps and managers and stuff out there in the fields and uh, you know what there's, there's no better feeling I, I, it really isn't 
so yeah team team is uh team is what it's all about you know and and, and look you know tom brady's only as good as that front line in front of him i mean right. listen, if, if that 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 line falls apart tom brady's gonna fall apart that's all it is. i mean he's a great player but you know you cannot you cannot play alone you can't that where it's table games or sports you just can't play alone and you know what there's a lot of people that think they can play alone and every time and i know you guys are have seen this every time somebody thinks they're a solo player sooner or later <laughs> sooner or later they fall off then they can do it for a while it's just like somebody who's on a, a major runner you know they beat you for millions and millions and millions and then all of a sudden that day comes and that run starts the other way and man is it fast the other way down the hill well guys uh uh, I'm going to ask you for now, 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 I know you're going to say something about team, but if you had to give one piece of advice, you know, you're giving direction, you got a guy, you know, he's a ship manager and he wants to go on up the ladder. Ron, what would be the first one piece of advice? What you'd give him for the next move? One piece of advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. And I've said this before, I've, I've told this to a lot of my managers position yourself in this business and in life so that when an opportunity presents itself, you can be prepared. Uh, Ron, say that again. Position yourself in this business and in life so that when an opportunity presents itself, you can seize the moment. Learn all you can and be ready. That's good. What about you, Paul? One piece of advice. Hey, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I can go second on that one. I mean, <laughs> That was a killer. He should have been the closer, man. <laughs> Bring in the left-hander. <laughs> uh, I think I think my piece of advice is uh, is my my uh, probably my personal foundation of of, of uh, trust, respect, and, and confidence. I mean, I, I have uh, trust in my team. I respect them, and I have confidence in their ability to move forward. And, um, and I, I believe in that, that relationship foundation um, as, my, as my kind of uh, mantra, you know, through, throughout work. But, and I, I would give that advice is, is you know, have, make sure that trust, respect, and, and confidence in, within your personal relationships and your business relationships um, is there. You know, if not, you're, you're not getting anywhere. If you're working with somebody and you don't trust them or respect them or have confidence in their ability, then you two shouldn't be working together. But, but I, I just think those, those three things are, uh, it's, a, it's not mine either. It's a Mac McIntyre thing. I don't you know Mac, uh, but yep. I really believe in that uh, relationship foundation. I, I, not a topper, but. <laughs> oh yes. Yes, it is. I like it. I like it. It's so true. I think Ron beat me on that one. I'm gonna give him. I'll give him that one. <laughs> I'll get him next time. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more with with both of you. You know, it's funny. There, uh, David. Uh, uh, I think it's David Frost was doing an interview with the great Hervé Fillion, the, the harness driver, and he won at the time. He was the by far thousands ahead of everybody in, in wins. He's since been surpassed, but he says, you know, what Hervé, what what makes you so good? And he says, even though I don't have the best horse, I always put that horse in a position where if something happens, I can win. And when you said, put yourself in a position, and I think putting yourself in position means learning all you can. That's don't it. Don't be afraid to do it. People that punch it, if you're, if you're planning to punch a clock as a manager and get up the ladder, you, you're in the wrong business here because punching a clock ain't going to get it. You got to learn as much as you can from everybody you can, and don't be afraid to outwork the next guy. And you'll you'll go up to put yourself in a position, and like I said, surround your Paul's thing about surrounding your people. If you can't trust them, you're, you're, it's not going to go. Well, guys, this has been fantastic. I, I knew it was going to be. I I I I I I was I've been just you know I've been thinking about this, contemplating this 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 meeting of the minds for. Uh, like two weeks now and it, it turned out to be everything i thought it would be so guys i really want to thank you for being on being to know we might we might have to do this again this this might have to be round two of this 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 this, 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 this take it easy on me paul take it easy on me next time yeah yeah because <laughs> paul, paul be ready for the next time you be he was ready paul. this time no. <laughs> that's it man i'm gonna bulk up <laughs> guys thanks again uh there'll be a little thing here somewhere 
uh, that tells you to subscribe to the channel, man, I'll tell you what, it makes a difference when you do subscribe to the channel. I'm, I'm real. I, I, I popped through 300 the other day, man. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling. So, yeah. and we've been, I've been a little lax, you know, this starting this new uh, job and fill in stuff. And I, I haven't had, but I got things, I got things, I think I got things a little bit more under control and we're going to be in the know more often. So guys, thank you again. And we'll see you again on the next be in the know. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks.